Hey everyone, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 58 of Coffee, Comics, and Comments. This is where we show you some great books, we drink some awesome coffee, and read some of the comments you guys left in our previous videos. As you can see, I am not alone. I got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show again, uh, Bueller. Awesome. It's been uh, quite a while since he's been here. Actually, it's been a while since we've made one of the coffee videos. It's been like a month or something like that. I know. I guess I just long. had to wait for you. I couldn't do it by myself anymore. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, yeah, this guy's <laughs> sticking around, so we'll see how that goes. Um, one thing that I want to talk about really quick, obviously, the coffee that we're drinking today. And my coffee is from Mocha Express. It's actually just regular black coffee. It's nothing too fancy today. And uh, honestly, they do have the eggnog latte available, but they ran out of eggnog. I've had it. It mm -hmm. was great. Ah. But they're already out of eggnog, and hopefully they get it back in tomorrow morning. So, so, so you like totally ran them out, or did they run out on their own? No, they ran out. On their, I only have one, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, man. They didn't, must not have ordered enough. So, well, what, what are you drinking? Uh, actually, I'm being rebellious today. Uh, even though I did get this from Mocha Express, it is a green tea with one Splenda in it. I'm kind of on a diet thing, and I've coffeed myself out for the morning, so... You know, I he's mean, already lost 85 pounds in three days. <laughs> it's incredible. Not quite that much, but a lot. I've lost a total of 21 pounds in five days. So that's awesome. Yeah. Guys, I need to go on a diet. Maybe we can do something together. Love that. Okay, let's go to pizza. We'll talk about there it. There we go. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about, and uh, obviously, we've done 58 episodes of the uh, Coffee and Comics show, and we are going to be changing things up a little bit. We were floating an idea a while back about more having a. Um, a podcast type style and we actually talked about doing another video but I said to myself we're already kind of doing that video pretty much and it's called the coffee and comics video and we can just add some stuff to that sure so, we'll so what we're gonna do we're gonna tinker with this as we go along but we're gonna be based on topics as well as showing books and the topics that we talk about are actually the ones that people are leaving us comments on our sneak peek video that we put out every Wednesday this last video we put out, we asked the question, Image Comics, is it an indie publisher or is it one of the big three? And there were a ton of comments and all these comments that we have are from that video. And trust me, there is a big difference of opinion on this topic and that's what we're gonna be talking about this week. I think that's awesome. Bob has some insights. He's tried to share them with me. I said, be quiet. Wait till we get on video. I don't <laughs> wanna know. So it should be a lot of fun. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to show some books in the beginning, we're going to get to the topic, we're going to discuss the comments that were sent our way, and then at the end we'll get back to some books. But really quick, I want to let everyone know, uh, Bob is going to join me this Saturday. We're going to do a comic book auction at yes. 5 o'clock. Bob's got some books that he's going to sell. I've got some books I'm going to sell. It's going to be on the Comics with Bueller channel, so please join us. And actually some of the books I show at the end are actually part of the auction lots. So you can get kind of a sneak peek. And uh, I know you were telling me about possibly a book you wanted to show. Yeah, actually, um, I, I, I got some that I want to sell. But one of the, uh, the ones that come up is uh, the, my Kelly Sue DeConnick run. Uh, really love her uh, writing. And uh, she did Captain Marvel number one. I have a slabbed issue signed by oh, her. We're going to have a slab on the Comics of Bueller. Well, that's pretty cool. It's <laughs> the first time for everything, right? So, yeah, we're selling slabs. I mean, there it's just go. going crazy. That's kind of cool. So, with his books and my books, mm -hmm. I think there'll be a nice variety for everyone. And it uh, should be a good time. The auction should be go pretty well. We'll have two people kind of doing it. And, then, uh, you know, we'll maybe make a little bit of money. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, should be good. And if you don't know Bob... Bob has a channel called Everything Comics. He talks about pretty much everything comics. And he does a coffee video. It's kind of strange because it's <laughs> somewhat similar what we're doing somewhat, there. Somewhat, somewhat. <laughs> but I've been on it. It's a lot of fun. He does some great reviews. So please go check out, what's it called again? Everything Comics. And the show is called uh, Having Comics with My Coffee. And uh, I drop that uh, every Saturday. And uh, stay tuned. I got other stuff that I'm going to be dropping as well. Hey, you're doing really well on that don't say um thing. By Thank the way. you. So I just want to let you know. <laughs> Congratulations on that. <laughs> just to frame it, guys, he's got a big sign underneath the camera that says don't say um. So it reminds me. So <laughs> the next time you go watch one of Bob's videos, this coffee video, make sure you have do the um counter and just put right. that in the comments down below and just uh, put how many times the um comes up because yep. it happens to the best of us. I'm self conscious about it, which is why he's digging on me right now. But it's okay. I do say um a lot, especially when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say. 
uh, talking by yourself is actually a lot harder than people it think. Definitely is. So. <laughs> it's all good. All good. Okay, let's go ahead and get the the books. I'm gonna go ahead and show some of mine mm -hmm. real fast, and we'll go ahead and get to the topic. The first one I have up here, obviously, is Doom. Is that Dooms? Number one. Dooms. A great Liefeld cover. I had to show it. I picked this up, and I was like, "Give me a break." It just looks fantastic. Love the look of that book. Another one I have is Astonishing Tales featuring Guardians of the Galaxy number 29. I believe this is a reprint mm. or one of those relaunch or whatever, something like that. Kind of a cool cover. That's the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Nice. This one right here was actually a gift from my good friend uh, Hack. This is Uncanny X-Men number 22, the Carnageized variant. Really like that cover. Love that cover. These next ones were actually one I bid on an auction. And these are from Comic Spectre. Mm -hmm. And this is Dark Knight Metal number one, the Tyler Kirkham variant. Kind of a neat looking cover. That's an awesome cover. This was also in that lot. This is the Scooby Apocalypse number one, the Jim Lee. This is a variant, I think it is. And honestly, uh, Comic Spectre, he autographed it for me down at the bottom, so I think that's kind of cool. But a great looking, look at that Jim Lee cover. Wow, nice. Yeah, very cool. Some of his Scooby-Doo covers are really good. Never even knew he did Scooby-Doo covers. That's awesome. Um, I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this other one was actually a gift from my friend uh, Frank, and he sent me a whole bunch of books and a lot of stuff that's going to be going out as Comic Karma. But one of the books in there that he wanted me to keep was this Teen Titans number four, and this apparently is the first appearance of Speedy in the Teen Titans. And that's a really cool book. I don't have a lot of Teen Titans and I just want to tell you, Frank, these are awesome. All the books he sent me, I mean, he sent, I think, about 50 or 60 books, maybe more. But uh, that one's really cool. So I appreciate that. And that is going to go up on my wall that you guys always see behind me. And uh, awesome books. So appreciate that, Frank. We're going to let uh, Bob show some books here. I, I like that last one you did because uh, Speedy is one of my favorite characters, and uh, that's actually one of the ones that's on my list to get. So, oh, awesome! Really? <laughs> I'll flip that over so you can't look at it. No, anymore. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. So, uh, I brought, I did bring some books, and you know me, I, I love some Daredevil, and I, I just recently I went to the uh, Frankenstein swap. I, I know Bueller's talked about that on his show. And uh, there were a lot of great books there, and I was able to pick up some great Daredevil uh, Silver Silver Age books. So I thought I brought those today. And the first one we have uh, number thirty-three, like that cover. And then uh, we have number thirty-four. This is all, of course, Beetle action. Kind of a weird villain, suction cups on his fingers. And uh, then that's we got what the, the Morbius guy has. Yeah, he, he does, but yeah. not like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got number thirty-six. I got these all for a great price. And then we have number 42, which, of course, we got the Jester action going on. First appearance of Jester? First appearance of Jester. The poor man's Joker is basically what that is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and then number, some people would say he's actually the trickster, but anyway, right. uh, number 46. And uh, I got those all for a really great price and, and kind of fills out some of my uh, early uh, Silver Age run on Daredevil. And so like those books. Not bad. I know you're a big, huge Daredevil fan. I used to have that Jester one. I don't know what happened to it. They just vanished. Well, maybe I got yours. You probably did. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the topic. And let me uh, pull up the comments that we have here. Like I said, the topic of today is Image Comics. Is it an indie or is it considered one of the big three? And pretty much the comments that we're reading is going to drive the conversation. Um, so the first one we have here is from Raider Mike 510 He says, I consider it being the big three because it brought out a lot of memorable characters in the 90s. For me, like Spawn, Shadowhawk, Savage Dragon, and teams like Youngblood, Cyberforce, and Wildcats, etc. There's also another comment. These are very similar, so I wanted to do them together. This is by Patrick Marilago. Image is a big three and has been for a while. Based on their sheer volume of sales, number of titles, footprint in the current market, and the fact they've been around for, what, 30 years now? Oh yeah, big three for sure. So let's first off and look at the first comment. And he actually listed a bunch of the characters. Mm -hmm. Now, he's right on the money when he talks about the characters and how, what they brought. But how many of those characters are relevant right now? Uh, only one of them, I think. Yeah. Maybe two. <laughs> Not yeah. very many anymore. Obviously Spawn. 
is the Spawn one. Is, is the one. Um, when's the last time you saw Shadowhawk? Yeah, uh, you mean in the dollar bins? You know? <laughs> uh, Savage Dragon still is an ongoing series. Still is an ongoing series. Uh, Young Blood, Cyber Force, Wildcats. I, I mean, heard from them in years. From what I understand, Jim Lee's going to keep doing Wildcats over at DC. Yeah. And, you know, they own them now. We haven't seen a Wildcats book in how long? Yeah. And so, I mean, not relevant at all. Yeah. So, the reason why I bring up the characters, and this is pretty important, because one thing when they you think about an indie title, do you think of a mainstream character? No. I don't I don't think of a mainstream character as an, as an indie title, but... Um, really, if if you're asking that question, it still comes back down to how do you define what an indie is? Yeah. And and so if you're defining it on characters, then you're looking at what's mainstream and what's not mainstream. Okay. And if it's going to be that definition, then yeah, I could see where he's coming from. You know, you have a larger character; they're bigger than life. Everybody's buying it. If you consider that mainstream because it's more commercial and out there, then I can understand your definition. Sure. Now let me throw this out there, and okay. I actually alluded to this before we started talking. Mm -hmm. So I asked you about IDW, another publisher. Mm -hmm. Do you consider them to be an independent publisher? I do. Okay. They have titles G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. They have titles that are Transformers. Mm -hmm. They even have titles My Little Pony. Those are well-known franchises. They are. Would you consider those independent titles? That's a good question because, I mean, again, you're coming down to the definition of what an independent comic company is. Well, let's talk about the definition of independent really quick since mm -hmm. you just brought it up. All right. <laughs> so independent. <laughs> so the definition of independent is free from outside control, uh -huh. uh, not influenced or affected by others. Does that sound like something that IDW would have on those characters? No. It doesn't because uh, with G.I. Joe and with My Little Pony and with franchises like that, usually when you sign a deal, I, and I know this from Dark Horse, mm -hmm. Dark Horse had a lot of um, movie titles that they started producing, Star Wars, Predator, Aliens, all those, uh, and I know there's strings attached with those. They retain the rights to pull them whenever they want. Uh, they retain the rights to um, have the canon formed a certain way. And uh, they put constraints on it. So by that definition, yeah. I would say that no, those titles at least yeah. would make them not yeah. an, an independent company. Obviously, that's IDW, and we're actually talking about Image. But I just wanted to bring the fact about the characters and what uh, Raider Mike was talking about as far as characters mainstream. Sure. Uh, obviously, Spawn is the one mm -hmm. that is the mainstream character. And there was also another one which you left off here that's probably the most well known. Mm -hmm. and it's it's not really character; it's just a book, and that would be The Walking Dead. Walking Dead, that's their big one. Yeah, and which unfortunately is now over. Right. Doesn't mean that we don't see it again, you know, the spin off or whatever, you sure. know. But that's the big one. I mean, it's even bigger than Spawn, I would say, just as far as a, a household name type thing. I could ask my mom what The Walking Dead is, and she'd be able to tell me. Oh, it's a TV show. She wouldn't be able to tell me it's a comic book. Right. But I'd ask her what Spawn is, and she probably wouldn't know what Spawn is. Probably not. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, there was a movie that came out in the 90s, and it's been talked about in the news lately, but mainly most people are not going to know who that character is. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on back. Uh, we already read Patrick's, but Patrick said on here, based on the sheer volume of sales. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the information available that you can find out as far as volume of sales that Image is putting out, Marvel is the big one. Marvel actually has, um, I'm looking at 40% of the market is Marvel. 30% of the market is DC. Uh, these are rough within one or two percentage points. 10% of the market is Image. And for a company that's been around for 30 years, that's not a huge portion of the market that they control. And the funny thing is, they were bigger when they started. They were actually number two. They were right behind Marvel right. for a few years. For a few years. Mm -hmm. And then these characters that were mentioned by Raider Mike kind of faded away. That's right. And that was kind of they they were they were more they're more independent later on than when they first started, which I thought was kind of interesting. It, it, that that is interesting, but I mean, really, you can't look at as far as I'm concerned, and and again. You know, uh, when I came over today, you you talked of that this was going to be our subject, and I, I haven't done any research on this, so this is pure purely opinion. <laughs> and my opinion on this is... I want your opinion. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Uh, but my opinion on it is really that uh, sales does not uh, um, bring you the definition or define you as an independent company. I mean, 
if you are an indie title, mm -hmm. right? Your uh, image gives you the rights to be able to own your own stuff, and then that gets published. You want it to do well, and just like those guys that came out of you know Marvel, you have to Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld yeah. and Todd McFarlane. They were selling books like they did at Marvel because you know that that was the spec bubble that was happening. Yeah. They sold millions of books, but it was still an independent company, yeah. right? And but they happen to sell a heck of a lot. So I don't think volume of sales makes it independent. That's true. I like and, that point. And so, um, so when it when it comes down to it, I think it, it's perception, yeah. right? It, it really is. I mean, um, can I give you just like a perfect example of this? Yes. Okay. When I was <laughs> growing up in the '80s, uh, metal was huge, right? And um, there was this thing that happened where metal split off. You had these heavy metal bands that came out that were considered underground, right? That everybody was all hip into. At least a certain percentage of people were all hip into. And then there were the ones that went what they called commercial. Yeah. Right. And the ones that went commercial, the guys that were on the, you know, on the cutting edge stuff, they vilified those because they were too big. Everybody knew yeah. who they were, uh, and these guys over here were better. And then you had bands that kind of broke the mold who everybody hated like the band Kiss mm -hmm. who instead of saying we're a band and that we're you know an independent you know entity we're now a corporation and everything that they did had to do with merchandising and licensing and and they made a ton of money off of it and then there are, are those kind of smaller bands who you know always said that they were independent but were actually commercial because they sold out <laughs> Metallica but you know I'm come not going to say <laughs> come on <laughs> but 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 the, but the perception you know in the public's eye is anything that goes completely popular yeah is now commercial yeah and that's not necessarily true yeah and I think it's the same thing with this big sales does not you know make uh, uh, an independent company now one of the big ones sure you want big sales I yeah mean, that's the that's whole the, point of yeah. it yeah I agree so Okay, these next two comments mm -hmm. you're reading. Sure. We'll see how this goes. Uh, next one is from Brett F. And I know Brett F. comments on your stuff. He's he, commenting he leaves on my great, stuff. Great comments. Thank Absolutely. You, Brett. Uh, and Brett says, uh, there isn't a big three. Uh, great, great way to start. Marvel and DC are in a class by themselves. Uh, Image would be the best of the rest, but they are way behind DC and Marvel. Image has one main book and uh, character that everyone knows. And that has the staying power to keep on going, that being Spawn. Uh, and I know that Savage Dragon has been around for a while, but no one outside the comic community would ever have heard of it and never would see it in the top 100. So I don't think sales are that strong. I really like Image Comics, but they will probably never be in the same class as Marvel and DC. I... I agree with that to a certain point, mm -hmm. and um, because you're never going to be in the same class as Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or Aquaman or Spider-Man and Wolverine, these characters that have years and years and years, and were original characters type right. thing, and for any other outside company to try to come in and compete with that, um, and I think Image recognizes that. I think it, that's why they kind of went away from their superhero books and now all the books that are coming out are pretty much standalone books they're they're not really superhero based they're story based i mean ranging the gamut i mean you name it you know they cover every everything in there the least thing that they're focused on is superheroes absolutely uh, the original model that they came out with had nothing to do with anything being character based or driven yeah right every, the, what they did was set up a model that was strictly a publishing company, yeah. right? You could come here and um, if you have a book that you wanna sell, we can take it on and we'll publish it for you. We'll take a certain percentage, but you're in control of, of, yeah. of everything. You can't do that with Marvel or DC. Yeah. And so- Now Image does have, I mean, the, no, not anyone should just go, hey, I want this book out. This they, they obviously have, like they look at it and they say, oh, is this a good property or whatnot? And they decide that they want to publish it sure. or, or distribute it. And but so there is a process involved. Of it's course. not just anybody that can just make a book. I'll hear image do it. That's that's not what right. they do. They now, they vet their stuff. Yeah, they they vet it. So mm -hmm. and you know one of the things was The Walking Dead, another mm -hmm. title we're gonna talk about it real quick again. That was a title that uh, they pitched to Image. Mm -hmm. Image didn't like it. He uh, Robert Kirkman lied to him and said that's about aliens. 
I and remember that's that. That's how right. that book got published. Right. And when that book came out, they're like, wait a minute, there's no aliens involved. He's like, yeah, you know, it's it's actually about zombies type thing. Mm-hmm. Best decision ever was a lie about The Walking Dead to get right. it published. Got my foot in the door. <laughs> exactly. And then look what look what happened. So yep. great comment from Brett. And we got another one on there as well. Next one is from Tony Miles. He says, while Image certainly began as an independent, uh, I have been told by shop owners that they no longer consider Image to be an independent, but one of the mainstream publishers like Marvel and DC. However, I do believe that Image does retain an independent feel and approach in regards to the titles that they are willing to publish. You know, I, I would agree with that, you yeah. know. But again, definition as opposed to feel, right? That they maintain the feel of an independent comic, but because of how much they publish, again, we're yeah. talking about perception. Yeah, I think that um, I like this comment because I like the fact that you brought up comic shops. And I would actually mm. like to talk to some comic shops. There's obviously plenty around here. Sure. And see how they feel. Now, TFA might not be the one to talk to because since they're kind of affiliated with Dark Horse Comics. Sure. So they're definitely going to have their opinion. And also, Image Comics is here in Portland as well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reach out to them and see if they don't want to clarify exactly what it is. Right. I look on their website. They don't really say, they don't say that they're an independent publisher. They go into detail. They talk about uh, the roots of the company, but they never use the word independent publisher. Right. Um, but I like the fact that he, he mentioned the, what stores perception are. Now that it's been around for 30 years, you know, and uh, it's available, it's in Diamond distribution, mm-hmm. all the titles and stuff like that. So thank you so much, Tony. And we have one last comment here, and this one is from Grail187. First thing, he says, enjoy the channel. Thank you, Grail. Appreciate that. And I like this comment. And that's what, the reason why I say this for last. He said, I would say both. Image is independent due to how it is set up in the beginning and has continued to operate that way. Big three, I would put up there as a publisher company. I would say that that is a perfect statement. It is both. It is, it has the publishing power of a Marvel and a DC to where like, if the comic shop sees, oh, it's an image title, I'm gonna buy it, type right. thing. They have the power to put their books in Barnes and Noble, type thing. Um, but what's nice about it is the creators that are under the, the dome of image, they own the rights to their books. It is creator owned books that are that are being published right so the creator makes the book but they don't have to take on the uh the publishing or the advertising for that book that's what image does and image like you said takes a small percentage of the sales of that book absolutely i think it is the best of both worlds type thing you're gonna get that name recognition with that image logo on the top of your book you're gonna get that control of the book because you are independently owned so I think a perfect statement is it's both. It obviously doesn't have the market share that the other big two do, right? but it has the name that people are aware of. And I think that goes a long way. It does, it really does. And, and I would agree with that statement. That's kind of where I land, it's both. The perception makes it feel like it is one of the big three or mainstream uh, and because of you know their presence. And then the other part of it is, is that the actual definition of what uh, an indie title is, Mm -hmm. it does follow that with all of the different titles that are creator owned. And so, I mean, that's, that's what I think. So part of it is public perception, right? Which is what we're talking about here. And the other part of it is what the actual definition of what an indie title is and, and image nails both of those at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Now for sales go up and they have uh 80% 80% of the market, we're going to switch on that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see that happening. Um, so that's the topic that we wanted to talk about. Let me know what you guys think about this. And it, there's a little bit of homework involved for you guys who are watching. Uh, like I said, we're going to be asking a question in our weekly sneak peek video that we put out on Wednesdays. That usually comes out around 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Go in there, watch that video, leave a comment down below. And obviously a few days later on this Monday show that we do, we're gonna be talking about that topic in length. And it really evolves around what you guys have to say. So I think it's a good way to get everyone involved 
and I don't know exactly what the next topic might be, mm -hmm. but speculation definitely seems to be a trigger right now. Absolutely. And you know what? That might be the question that we're talking about next week. All for it. I, I love the format. <laughs> I love the discussion. And I mean, this is the type of stuff that I've always wanted to just do and get into. There we so, go. Awesome. awesome. Hey, well, hey, let's show our last books. You know, like, we haven't showed too many books. It's more talking, mm -hmm. but we do have more cool books and I'm going to go ahead and go. And like I said earlier, some of these books are going to be on the auction Next Saturday, you can take that one down too. Okay. You can keep it unless you want me to have it. <laughs> uh, on Saturday, the auction, like I said, five o'clock Saturday, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, P.M. Pacific Standard Time. This will be on there. Spawn forty six. I picked up a bunch of spawns. I'll show you all my got. Um, number forty seven. They're all in great condition. Number forty eight. Nice run. I think I picked about fifty. But you were there. I was there. Yeah. Was there. Never mind. <laughs> number 49 but as you've stated before every single cover for for spawn is, is just amazing it is it is one of the best number 73 and then another one that's going to be on the auction this is kind of a hot book right now this is marvel action spider-man number 11 the b cover whoa right there that's the one that nobody ordered it's a one in ten everyone's flipping out about it i had the last issue that sold for like over 100 bucks that's awesome you never know so there you go. I'll go ahead and let Bob show his last six books. That's awesome. And you know, I mean, you know, I had to bring Daredevil, so I got to bring, you know, my buddy Bullseye. This guy's a one-trick <laughs> pony, man. A one-trick pony. As you know, some people call me Bullseye Bob, and so uh, this is this is my Bullseye book. So this is Daredevil number nine, and this is the uh, Bring On the Bad Guys variant uh, that they did with Bullseye. Then I got uh, Bullseye and Punisher number four. This is one of my favorite covers out of that five-issue run. I like that one. Then we got Moon Knight, number... I don't know, I should have wrote it on the back like you do. Three. It is number three. Thank you very much for seeing that for me. <laughs> i got to put my glasses on. Hey, but you, we you, got, you know how I know that. It's because that used to be my book. That's right. I'll just put that right back over <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got that from your auction. Uh, you did. <laughs> then I got Daredevil, number 288. I've always loved this cover with uh, the kingpin in the background. I can always tell my books because they're in the Max Light bags. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I still have to get some Silver Age from those guys. There you go. Uh, and then, of course, uh, one of my favorite books of all time, Daredevil number 181, The Death of nice. Elektra, and you got the uh, bullseye action on the cover. And then this one is my favorite bullseye cover of all time. Uh, this is Bullseye Greatest Hits number five. I can't think of the artist's name. He's from Brazil. Uh, but I have a print of that, and I'm actually going to get that signed by him if I ever meet him. So Very cool. It's good stuff. Well, hey, those are our books that we're showing. Obviously, guys, we actually changed up the set a little bit. So a lot of changes coming to the uh, copy and comics video. And I want to let uh, you guys let us know what you thought about this. Did you like the discussion? I'm also thinking about maybe adding uh, some comic book reviews, some uh, discussion between yourself and my, me. That'd be awesome. That should be good. You know, we both read a lot of comics. We both have opinions on them. And uh, mine's much better than his, but he'll have the opportunity I would to say, share it. I would say our opinions <laughs> differ. <laughs> <Right? laughs> That's all right. But uh, I want to say thank you, everyone. Like We've been doing this. This is the 58th uh, coffee video, so obviously a long-running series. There are some changes happening. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, hopefully you enjoy having Bob here. I know I do. It's actually a lot easier having a guest with me. And uh, hopefully he can make it uh, ongoing, and we'll maybe add some other guests as well. You That'd be know. awesome, but I, I really appreciate being here. I appreciate being on the show. It's a lot of fun, and I love our discussion, so awesome. let's go for it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>